Arnaud Caron from uh, MediaKind will be talking about a new approach to media delivery embracing the cloud. I think this is a absolutely critical technology for all of us in the broadcast industry to understand and um, looking forward to it. Thank you. So my name is uh, Arnaud Caron within uh, MediaKind um, based in France, as you can hear. All right, um, so MediaKind, for those who don't know us, we are a global company, former Ericsson Media Solutions. Um, we deliver broadcast and OTT uh, video solutions and technologies across the globe. We have a, a global presence, as you can see here. So I split uh, these uh, presentations in two parts. First, focusing more on the IP as a standard and the technology, and not only the IP and the standards, and this is exactly what's happening here. Um, second, moving forward more on the cloud for the media. What does it mean? Why do we need this uh, for the broadcast industry as well? All right, let's start with the broadcast challenges, at least the one that we see. Um, obviously, we all talk about the IP here. The reasoning is that we need to get a bit rid of that uh, uh, very specific interfaces that we have, um, but without compromising on the broadcast and the video quality. So IP is nice, but it's not good enough. And you heard that probably all the day long uh, here. We need to be able to uh, split the broadcast and the IT infrastructure. We need to be able to enable uh, new infrastructures in the, uh, in the data centers, IT infrastructures that are less uh, costly than the, than the specific broadcast infrastructures. That would bring as well some flexibility because our customers, our broadcasters, are challenged every day with the new entrants coming in the, in the landscape. They can build video very fast with a decent quality, uh, but very fast on the market versus a more uh, slow approach that we used to have in the, in the industry. Just one picture about what a data center looks like. Some of the data centers looks already like this one. This is a commodity off-the-shelf uh, hardware solutions. You get that from HPE, Dell, IBM, whatever. Um, with IP technology, with networking, this is not the traditional broadcast uh, data center we all know about. This is the future, this is where this is going. So why do we need this IP technology? Suspect was talked already many times uh, in the last uh, sessions. Um, basically, it's all about the flexibility and the agility. It's about being able to start up new services quickly, changing the applications, moving from one uh, data center to another one, getting faster on the market and being more flexible as well. Um, like to reuse the, the common Ethernet switches, the common networking interface, that's about the IP and the commodity servers. You've seen this on the previous slides with the uh, data center. Flexibility on the streams as well. Um, that's part of the standardization that is, uh, is happening here. Um, we need some more registration. We need some discoveries. It was tackled as well in this area. And the media capabilities. IP natively does not transport very well uh, high bandwidth with the low latency. Um, we need something that is denser than the SDI, that is bidirectional, denser because we are increasing the size of the stream, moving to 4K, maybe to 8K. Haven't seen around if we have some uh, 8K uh, demonstrations. So we need to be able to go uh, beyond what we used to do. And we need to be agnostic to the video formats. This is evolving every day. We cannot change the interface every time there's a new video format or new resolutions that is coming up. That leads us to this uh, software mostly on data centers running in virtualized environments. A bit of a picture, so you have this uh, nice 3 zhgi cabling. Um, the same kind of bandwidth can be achieved with a very smaller footprint on the IP networks. Having it's not a big surprise, but even if you wire it very well and very properly and cleanly, this is way more efficient to manage and way more. We know there are some limitations. We need the DHCP. We need a lot of things in the IP that we uh, don't have today. But this is you can see the benefits right away on the data centers. This zone is about the standards. We need standardizations. We need to have uh, interfacing. We need to have everyone agreeing on the same interfacing and transporting um, the, the signal and the protocols the same ways. Um, we need these foundations. I think this place proves that it's required, and this place proves that everyone agrees on this. Must, almost everyone. 
Okay, I mentioned that already. I think this uh, <coughs> joint task force on the network media is very instrumental in getting to the standard, is getting to these commonalities for the media, is getting over the challenges that we face today for the broadcast industry. Um, we need to keep going on with this uh, broadcast transformation. There is this uh, real-time professional media standards that are coming up. Some here, some are coming in the future, in this future zone. Um, it's, it's fundamental that we keep this going and we make it happen in the reality as an industry. There's already a lot that has been done by, uh, by the companies, by us, by uh, the other partners in this area. 2110, of course, is the one that is uh, publicly available or proven available. There's still some to do in this, uh, in this area. What is interesting with this approach is that all those bottom layer of standards today are coming natively from the IP industry. We don't reinvent the wheel in this area. We added on top of this um, the standards that we required for the media, transporting the media, uh, signal, video, audio, metadata, and so on, on, this, on top of the existing uh, layers, IP layers that are available, which means we can transport our video signal on the standard uh, routers and standard uh, uh, products. That was mentioned as well, I think, uh, we need to stack up this. Um, I like the, the pyramid view that we had uh, just, just before this show. Um, there's a lot of, that's been done in the media flow transport. There's more to be happening in the synchronizations of the flow, in the description of the flow, in the discovery as well, to be able to make it more efficient. And at the end of the day, to improve the QoS and the flow control. There's a lot to be doing in this area that's, uh, that, that's for us very important. All right, let's move on to the cloud side, the second uh, uh, side of this uh, presentation. OK, this is cloud. What is cloud? I will not try to define it. Honestly, I think we can spend six hours on this and even not being in agreement at the end of the discussion. What is important for me, and you see here, you have some technologies. You have a mix of uh, technologies. Yes, you have a list of provider, Azure, Amazon. You see them at the front of the NAB in the South Hall. Two of the three panels are Google Cloud, AWS. So they are going into this industry. They want to, to get into the broadcast industry. Uh, because they provide the right technology that can fit for this. This is what I will try to explain. For me, what is important with the cloud is getting the flexibility out of this, but for the media and for the broadcast and for the attributes that we have in this area. We have a broadcast quality. We cannot go and degrade this quality uh, by changing the technology. What is cloud about? What do we want? What are the main objective of all that stuff? It's really being able to scale. Being able to automate, meaning having the ability to repeat in a repeat manner, um, to deploy services exactly the same way, to interconnect, to uh, manage the platform exactly the same way at a scale. You want to scale up, you want to go faster on this common industry uh, versus doing things manually and doing configuration manually. That means that you need repeatability and you need a lot of agility as well. Behind this, there's all the concept of the software solutions that are coming on the table with this on, in the cloud with the flexibility of the cloud infrastructures. But again, don't remember, we all talk about media here. This is not a website that we spin up, an e-commerce website. We are doing media. This is 24 slash 7, 5 nines, uh, high bandwidth, low latency. That's a mandatory topic. Um, I'll come into details about that. What is the value? We touched base a little bit on this already, on the challenges. Um, our industry needs to reduce its cost, income of hardware, hardware costs, sorry, going into more agnostic um, infrastructure on, the, uh, on, on blade systems, on whatever cuts hardware, as well as the IP technology. Yeah. We mentioned agility, repeatability, flexibility. That's all about the full automations. We need to streamline the services. We need to streamline our operations and the way they can operate the platforms. We need to be more agile in a way uh, we deploy and manage new services. We spin up a new channel, we spin it down. That is a fast time to market that is required today compared to the, in order to compete with the new entrants on these markets. That can go very fast. Ultimately, we want to develop business 
this industry is still looking for money. Uh, our, our customers, are, everyone is looking for a way to get a bet, best customer experience and to embrace innovations, meaning new services, um, uh, a new value going into the market. That leads to two main um, uh, value. One is a saving on the CapEx and on the OPEX. CapEx with the infrastructure agnostic, OPEX with the operations that are more automating, more efficient. Second, that's a way to get some new revenue growth as well. You get new applications, you can test new channel, new type of services. You can launch a 360 channel quickly. If it doesn't fly because the customer doesn't like it, then you tear it down. That's not an issue. That's everything is possible with this type of technology uh, versus spinning up a, a, a new channel that would take a month today, even sometime more. So what type of applications are we talking about? We talk about, of course, the traditional head and the traditional services, broadcast services. Uh, we want to improve the efficiencies. We want to get more agile in terms of operations and the fast rollout that I already mentioned. Quick note on this. When I say cloud, I just mean that we can deploy on data centers, like the pictures on the f one of the first slides, on the private cloud, which is basically a data center with some abstraction of the hardware, uh, or on the public cloud, which is still a data center, it's just a bit up somewhere that you don't know it and you can get access to. But at the end of the day, it's all hardware, it's all the same thing, just the way you want to access it to be different, and who operates the infrastructure is also uh, different in this case. Um, we can enable new services with this type of technology. So we have the head-end, we can improve our current uh, broadcast solutions, but we can enable quickly some new live services, scale up on some on-demand system for the file transcodings, or even start some events uh, technology. I mentioned 360, you can launch a 360 events uh, in the cloud, in the public cloud, within a few hours. Get it up and running during your basket live event or during uh, your live concerts, and then tearing down very quick, quickly as well. This is very efficient versus doing that on-prem on your data centers, looking at the number and the volume of uh, processing functions you need to transcode a 360 event uh, uh, with multiple cameras. That enable new applications as well, like to scale the offload. So if you have some offloads, typically on the deliveries on the OTT side, so you can scale it up very quickly uh, in the private cloud with new uh, infrastructure or in the public cloud. You can enable as well some functions like the cloud disaster recovery. Today, our industry struggle a bit to manage disaster recovery because you have to duplicate basically your head end, duplicate all your functions in two different locations. So you duplicate the cost, the capex cost, but you duplicate the opex cost as well because you're still maintaining the two environments. So a lot of um, of, uh, of our customers are not basically using uh, uh, a disaster recovery today because they just can't afford it. With the cloud, basically, as you can spin up new services in the cloud or on data centers pretty quickly, then you can just save your configurations at some point, and if you have a disaster, launch it. That will cost you more for a short period of time, but it's still better to have your services live than just have it down for a few months, the time you rebuild your new head end, for instance. At insertion, it's back to the business and monetizations. We all know that, uh, particularly in the US, how important is that. wanted to focus a bit more on why the, the cloud and why the IT and why these guys like Amazon or Google or that folks uh, can come into this, uh, this market with us and can help us moving forward. Uh, it's actually two steps, one step from their side on managing operations capability, managing different points of presence. Uh, it's also a cloud foundation, it's an open source software. Everything we do now on the cloud is based on open source technology. It's based on the same open source technology that the web servers, the e-commerce servers are using today. We just tailor that for the media. We just manage the network differently, the way we access. Um, some of the part of the open source is managed differently, but the foundation is exactly the same. We mentioned the standardization, the IP standardization that is, that is ongoing, that is evolving. Um, cloud network getting media friendly with the bandwidth, with the ability and the flexibility to upstream a content or to uh, downstream something very easily as well. Um, and in terms of industry, if you pass through uh, this this show and all the last uh, two show uh, last shows, sorry, 
you can see that this is really evolving. There's a lot of software coming up versus some pure hardware uh, devices in the past. A bit of focus on what we do at MediaKind. We, we build up and transform all our solutions, all our uh, applications to become what we call cloud native, meaning being a cloud diagnostic, deploy on private, deploy on public clouds. It doesn't mean, it, it, sorry, it can, it can be relying as well on some hardware acceleration when it's needed, particularly in contribution and distribution side. Um, but out of this, it's getting very standard applications. Software orchestrations, you can easily spin up, spin down infrastructure with the automation we mentioned. And with our software, you can orchestrate as well the way you deploy your software into this infrastructure you can easily fail over one of the software application from one, uh, one data center to another one or from one rack to another one uh, the f in, a, in a very transparent way. That's the software orchestration managed. Today, uh, live services, is it running on this rack or this, this, this blade or that one or that one, really doesn't matter anymore. You've seen the picture, data center is all uniform. You don't really care where it runs. If something fails, you can easily replace it because that's an off-the-shelf uh, hardware and the software orchestration mechanism will take your software and move it somewhere else. That's why moving to IP is very important because in this case you don't have to wire manually uh, the video flow, uh, the video chain signal from one uh, server to another one. You heard maybe a lot about uh, microservices architecture, container, Kubernetes orchestrations. That's a, just a software framework, but it's very important because it helps to go faster in deploying new functions, new software, new HDR versions, new improvements in the encoding area or in the deployment area. That has a cost. The cost is, uh, of course, you add more layers, you add more complexity. You have all your data centers, you need to monitor everything, all up to the, to the video signal which is way more complex than we could be doing in the past. This is where the big data things are coming, where the analytics are coming as well, in order to be able to analyze all this data coming, because you could have a failure on your network, you could have a failure on your uh, operating systems, you could have a failure on your disk drive, you could have a failure on your orchestration solutions, on your container solutions, on your applications itself, and it's not the applications, it's one of the 10, 20 microservices that you're using that has all the failure points that you have now in this new type of, uh, of technologies. In the past, you know exactly where this live channel is being hosted and when you have an issue on the appliance, you know this is the appliance you have to fail. In these new technologies, well, <laughs> it's way more difficult to, to operate and to monitor and to manage. That's why we need this type of uh, common management and analytics uh, in the picture. To picture actually an architecture, this is our reference architecture, I would say, on the media kind side. You've seen this media microservices here. You can have an encoder, a packager, a decoder, a multiplexer, a receiver, whatever uh, you want here. They are running into pods of containers. They are running on operating systems, so Linux is typically the one that is used here with Docker containers. They are flexible and portable across multiple cloud environments, whether it's bare metal, private cloud, or public cloud. And on top of this, you need this application management, which you already had somehow, but now you make it a bit more global to all your, infra to all your, uh, your services. And you need this new layer, if you wish, the analytics and monitoring layer, um, that is of uh, an utmost importance now, as you guessed. What we are able to achieve, and that's something we announced uh, on this show now, is the ability to manage almost turnkey SaaS solutions in the public cloud uh, with all these orchestrations and the same reliability that we can have in, the, in, uh, in this industry. Managed by our services center and partnering with Google. This is what it is. Uh, it's very flexible. I mentioned earlier this 360 video. That's something we uh, showcased with um, uh, Dutch Telecom in Germany on the Basketball League. We put a couple of cameras in the fields, uh, 360 cameras, upstream that uh, in the public cloud, so you need pretty decent <laughs> bandwidth upstreams. Then do all the processing encoding functions, 
and get down to the CDN and the OTT player to play back your 360 on the device, on Android set top box, on the tablet or whatever. Um, this requires a lot of processing for a short period of time. You upstream that in the cloud, you do it in the cloud, and when you don't need it, you shut it down. It's very flexible, very efficient. That's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, I'm here. So um, I, d I just had one. Yep. Uh, what is the uh, what is the prospect for being able to get you know three gigabit or twelve gigabit streams in real time into the cloud? Is that something that is just easy, no problem? We can do it today, or is it something that's going to take a lot of work to engineer? So it depends on the, it's well, it's never easy because we talk about physical links here. We don't talk only about the bandwidth, but also the latency and, uh, of, of the upstreams. If it's not stable enough, then it doesn't fly. Um, usually, if we talk about to, to network or telco operators, big telco operators, they already have peering connections between their data center, where the satellite feeds, where the video feeds is, is there, is originated, sorry, uh, up to AWS, Google, and so on. They already have big bandwidth peering up to speed already today. So for that, guys, this is not a big issue. It's just a cost, but it's not a big issue. And then again, the public cloud is not public up in the air. It's a physical data center somewhere. Right, right, right. Put some network, some wire, and you get to this <coughs> connection. Just another place in the world. That's it. OK. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks.